All right, welcome all. Welcome home, I would say, but I'm not home. I'm on the other side of the continent. So we are in Cambridge, Massachusetts, Harvard University, at the Kirkland House with a bunch of juniors from Harvard University. So you're getting a very, very special cheap date night. You're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven good-looking dudes for the price of none. For the price of none. So we're not going to be all night. We're going to be, you know, hit some pretty good topics and some pop culture and music and, and movies, et cetera, kind of like we always do. The difference being is we can't be here all night because we got some guys that need to cut some weight. Uh, being wrestlers, uh, they got to cut some weight because they have a they have a match tomorrow. See, so what do you guys give us that? What's the match tomorrow? Uh, wrestling match. Wrestling match. We're traveling to Brown, hostile territory, looking for a dub. Brown University? Brown University, last dual receiver. Are they hostile? Uh, not enough. <laughs> you can't whoop their ass? We're going to whoop their ass. You better whoop their ass. <laughs> There's the thing. So off the record and, and on, doesn't matter. So if you don't whoop their ass, I'll still be here. I'll come choke. <laughs> I'll still come choke. It's it's put it live. It's, it's, it's exciting, too, because this is their senior night. Yeah. So we're coming. Their senior night when a big celebration is like their homecoming. So that's spoiler alert. <laughs> that's the plan. That's the plan. Okay. So Harvard University, most of these gentlemen are on or off or been around the wrestling team. They're all wrestlers in general. And so they have a big match tomorrow with Brown University. Close up the season, if I'm not mistaken. And then get ready for their postseason. I think conferences or dif district. The oh, conferences, so yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. conference in two weeks, and then you guys have NC2AAs, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, so like you said, we'll, we'll be kind of merciful because a couple of these young guys got to maybe got to cut a few pounds. And, you know, we don't cry because we're all wrestlers. That's part of the life, right? That, that's what we do. So for you guys in Supermax Nation, you get, a, like I said, a special treat. You're getting all these dudes, handsome, young, smart kids, including me, <laughs> uh, for the price of none. That's about as cheap as it gets. You know what cheap date night is. If it doesn't get any cheaper than that, I don't know what the hell is. Uh, so you get cheap date night, and so normally on cheap date night format is we talk movies, we talk music. I have a feeling we're going to end up talking more music than we do anything else tonight. So let's start with the obvious. Okay, so I was joking right prior to going on with the boys that it's kind of hard to go out and, you know, in a theater all the damn time and watch a two-and-a-half, three-hour movie yeah. because you're wrestling. And you're busy with school. And I'm going to guess your, your classes aren't like simple basket weaving. You probably have some difficult courses, right? Yeah. So any, any, anything else? So we just had the Oscars um, just you know a few weeks ago. Supermax did an Oscar special. I'll tell you what I called out. So I watched almost all the movies. Man, that's hard work. I'm going to tell you guys, man, that is hard work. You know how hard it is to sit in the theater forever and forever. So I called that. Um, my favorite movie was Jojo Rabbit. Don't know if you guys have seen it. Um, it didn't win. Parasite won. But I will say this. Parasite is a legit movie. If you haven't seen it, and if you're just too damn lazy to read the damn, you know, subtext, if you're too lazy to read that, Man, that kind of tells you where our country's going, right? We're too yeah. lazy to read. So anyway, I will say this. For the record, Parasite is a legit badass movie. Um, I had a feeling that they might win because let's put it all on the table. Um, none of the other categories had any kind of minorities of color folks winning anything. <laughs> and so I thought, like, okay, something's going to happen on the back end. And not to say that it was all bad. You know, they, they doled out the wealth, and that's cool, too. So Parasite, I'll, I will say for you guys, I know I've talked about it on air, legit seriously damn good movie and i'll say it deserved the oscar it doesn't mean that it was so much better than all the others but it was a very very good movie if you watch it you guys are recommended it highly check it out it'll freak you the hell out it was like wow this is a well-crafted uh storytelling and then just the usual you know the mechanisms of communicating right you know literary it was just it was well done and in a foreign language so it was really really good and the the plot twist because you got to have that right Plot the plot twist was definitely something I didn't see coming, and that's what you go to a movie for, to kind of be surprised or shocked. So anyway, Parasite, legit movie. I'll always call out, you know, Jojo Rabbit. Um, I'll say for you guys, it's my first time meeting you. I'm all new to these guys. Uh, my, my son's here, Richard, but I don't know any of these guys up until now other than on the phone call and Richard complaining and bitching about them, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> that's you know, probably <laughs> about who they are. About them. <laughs> <laughs> the homie Cole. <laughs> uh, but I will say this so for you guys. So Jojo Rabbit is what I recommend, why I recommend it if you guys haven't seen it. So if you don't know, I'm an ex-history teacher, U.S. history. And Jojo Rabbit was, if you're going to do what I tell people, my audience, 
the most covered, the most written about, the most talked about, the most movied about epoch, E-P-O-C-H, in human history, World War II and Nazi Germany. You guys all with me? Okay, there is nothing more covered historically than World War II and Nazi Germany. So stands to reason, right? If you're going to do Nazi Germany, World War II, then it better be damn good. <laughs> and it better be damn good because there's a lot done and there's a lot of material out there. So no movie about that time period, World War II and Nazi Germany, has moved me or made me think more since Schindler's List when you guys are probably young or maybe barely born. Right. Schindler's List was legit, still is. Great movie. Jojo Rabbit is that, just not the same type of movie. It's satirical. It's it's hysterical. It deals with the ugly, ugly of not feeling place in a society. Um, about a young boy trying to fit in, young guys uh, trying to fit in with the society, and trying to be, trying to find their place. In this case, a ten-year-old boy trying to fit in uh, in Nazi Germany, the Hitler Youth. And finding that he doesn't uh, doesn't quite fit, he's finding some things wrong about Nazism, fascism, racism, you know, um, the Jewish question in Germany at the time. He has trouble with all that, and so it manifests itself in him trying to fit in, but not quite. And you know, I won't give you the whole movie because I'm telling you, go see it. It is worth the watch. It is one of the best movies I saw all last year. One of the best movies of the decade, I, I really feel. Again, because of that, you know, that rubric that I just gave to you. I've never seen anything quite like it in terms of dealing with Nazism and World War II. So I'm spilling again on, on Jojo Rabbit, this phenomenal movie. And by the way, it's got Scarlett Johansson in it. Was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you guys are. Scarlett Johansson. And that little dude, uh, Roman Griffin Davis, uh, legit, he, he could have been nominated for best uh, – Best Actor nomination. He was that damn good. Badass. So anyway, so I've been watching a lot of movies, so let me let you guys talk a little bit. Um, who's seen anything over the last week? Anything new? Um, Spill, anybody. It was like free flow of conversation. Well, actually, I was thinking this whole time as you were talking. I wanted to ask some opinions on um, Parasite because we all watched it. I, I thought, oh, you guys so did? You, you, we, no? uh, Lucas so Richard, Richard. Yeah, oh, wow. we, okay. we watched it. I haven't seen it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, <that's good>. How <laughs> many have seen it? How many have seen it? Okay, okay. Well, okay. well, I mean, the reason I want to ask is because us two versus Richard. Just, <laughs> <Cole> just assumed <laughs> you guys did. <yeah. laughs> um, but me and Lucas had a bit of a differing opinion from everybody else. Uh oh, so from Richard. It was, um, we did not really like the ending. Oh, oh yeah, oh that was literally. How about saying the twist was different, right? Yeah, but it kind of creeped me out. But it was actually more so not because it was like creepy. I love creepy endings, and I love endings that are like they go against the norm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. But it felt unsatisfying. It felt rushed. It it felt like the ending was the not finishing. given exactly. It was not given like what I would have wanted out of it because it had this giant build up to that point. Yeah, and then it felt like it just kind of like. It, it didn't give me like the downhill that you need in a movie to feel like it is actually finished. It felt like it just kind of like stopped at that. So Parasite 2? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if they can so make another one okay. off of that movie. So that's all, no, hold on. All, all things uh, legit, right? Um, you, you know, if you see the movie, if you see the movie and you see the ending, you actually could do more because the guy's still stuck down in the, I won't give too much. <laughs> I mean, not, not that I'm saying you want to. Not that I'm saying you want to, but I mean, there is that, there could have been more. I know I, I kind of get where you are because I, I was kind of, you know, if, that, if I was pissed about it, I was like, damn, did all that damage and, and man, it just left you depressed. Right. Kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, damn. I know there's just a story about some fucked up people that did some really awful. Well, hey, listen, in general, it was, it was a depressing movie because what is it talking about, you know? And, and let's face it, we're in America, so we don't live like that on average, not, not like everybody, definitely not. You know, you guys live kind of cramped a little bit, but not like that kind of cramped. <laughs> you see that toilet? <laughs> what the hell was it? That, yeah, I love toilet. the set design for that. Yeah, that, that was, it was So I guess my point being is... Uh, it is worth the watch, I guess is what I'm saying, because if we're getting to that point now, and the truth is we've always had other countries that have the ability to construct or craft good, good film. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the truth. I don't think we've seen as much of it in Eastern, and I'll go a hard head, you know, step back for you guys. I'm not an expert, but I'm, I'm knowledgeable. Um, I read a lot. I know a lot. I like taking a lot of information. Akira Kurosawa, uh, Seven Samurai, 
you guys have never seen that, I'm recommending it to you. Phenomenal. Um, it's it's the, the genesis for the Magnificent Seven, old school Western that we have in the United States. It was like badass. But the tale and the story of these, you know, mercs kind of mercenaries for hire, um, wild guys that are selfish and self-centered, and they go and they fight this crazy robber baron landlord like in the Old West, but, you know, they kind of, they lifted a lot of the old westerns from Kurosawa, actually. And so he, he puts these seven guys together, these seven samurai, and they defend this village of poor people that can't defend themselves. And they're being raped and pillaged and being used by the landlord. Not like hundreds of people. Yeah. Like the yeah. Like these seven guys. That's a badass fight scene. Right. Holy shit, there's hordes of people. It's worth it by itself for that. So anyway, I, I digress a second, but... Um, We've always had great uh, film in other countries. The difference is, you know, our own, you know, proclivities as, as a country. We don't think there's anything good out there. We're, we're the best. And I'll be the first to say, I do believe the United States is the greatest country on the planet. You guys all know he's a vet. I'm a vet. We, we die for our country. I believe in it. But I'll be the first to say, to assume that there isn't something good in another country is arrogance. And in my world, that's not my country. We're not arrogant when we're on our best. We're kicking ass and taking names, and we're not thinking about arrogance or cock. You know, that, that's kind of the way I see it. Hopefully you guys go that route, too. That's good stuff. Um, you know, it's like beating somebody in a wrestling match, right? I don't know about you guys, but, you know, if he ever got off a match, beat somebody, and talked smack about it, he would have got smacked across the room. <laughs> we don't do that. You do your business. You respect your, your, your competitor, your, your opponent. You respect the other side. Beat the hell out of them. Crush them. Rape them. Bury them, dig them back up, rape them, murder them again. <laughs> you know, do all that. And then when you're done, it's like, none love for you. None but love for you. I'll see you next time. If you're still here, I'll meet you up again. So that, that's kind of the way we see it. But anyway, so, I mean, there are other things out there in this, you know, on this planet. And so Parasite, I think, it, I think it's the beginning. Um, I'm kind of with you on some of that. It kind of left me depressed like that. <laughs> um, I did like the movie. I thought it was well constructed. I do think that when it was all over and done, um, it's going to force us to take more looks at East Asian film and others, including Indian, uh, subcontinent, Southeast Asian. My, we already know about Europe. My take on that is that the ending specifically, if you feel disappointed when you watch the ending, then the movie did its job. And so, yeah, you, you take that. Disappointed? You take oh, yeah. <laughs> that. It's 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 uh, an ugly topic that is displayed truthfully. And if you did, if, if you left that movie feeling happy about yourself, <laughs> the director did a good job. Yeah. And so that's something that we have in Western culture, Western movies. Everybody likes to have a nice little rhythm put at the end of the thing, make you fucking feel good, walk out of the movie, and be like, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> it is more of an Eastern concept to just. End it where it's supposed to be ended. That's true. Leave you feeling. Well, actually, yeah. You know, the, East, the Eastern thought process, and I'm not stereotyping because, like, any Asians? <laughs> you know, we got any Asian brothers in here? Now I'm saying it's bad. I don't think anybody is. I don't, I don't stereotype, but for the most part, you're right. I mean, we, we do have that thing where we want to, we're this, nobody else mm -hmm. is. And then you have other cultures that want to you know, deal with reality mm -hmm. and say, this is really the way it is. And let's face it, I mean, you guys got to know this. Poverty exists all over the damn planet, including right. the United States. Mm -hmm. And we better start addressing, it, turn, it turns out, and I don't know what classes you guys have or your majors, but income inequality, um, uh, uh, not a gender divide, that's there too, but an education divide mm -hmm. in the quality of, of what you're getting in schools. You know, some of you guys are from the same area that, you know, Rich has described to me in, in, uh, in Pennsylvania. You know, you might have a better look at a quality education and a good um, wrestling for those of my wrestling, I got a lot of wrestling fans, by the way. Yeah, nice. So a lot of wrestling fans, but um, you guys can appreciate my, my nation. A lot of these guys are from Pennsylvania and areas that are really, really powerful in wrestling. Yeah. Um, some more so, some more so than our area, whether you like it or not. But you know, I'm gonna tell the truth. We 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 got some arrogance in our area right now. We think we're we're great. We're not bad. We're good, but we're not the best. We got work to do. So anyway, um, you know, for what you guys see. You get a good school system. You have parents that care. They spend money on your time, energy, and effort. And nobody's perfect, but you have a decent standard of living, a decent reality in terms of being able to actualize. You guys are all at Harvard University. That's not bad. 
by the way, if you guys don't know that. Uh, <laughs> I was lucky to be alive at 18. I had no idea. You know, so, <laughs> so I was lucky to be alive at 18. So trust me, I appreciate what you guys get to do, and you guys will do the same. But um, it's just another look at, at another part of the world and what they don't have. And so I do think we're going to see more of that. I don't know if it's um, – like watershed, meaning it's going to be like from now on every year it's going to be a foreign movie that wins. I don't know, um, but I don't I don't have a problem with it. Some people have had it, you know, that they won, not because it was a great or bad movie, but because it was a foreign film. Then I think that's asinine. I just think it's not smart for us. The uh, the Winklevoss twins actually came out with the uh, Snowpiercer. Have you seen that? That's I awesome. not. That's great that? movie. That's, that's that. That's that. that was the one. Uh, get the hell out of here. Those mugs are here. Mine's, sorry. Oh, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, when are they going to movies? <laughs> they, they, both, they both started with Elvis. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> 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 well, they're going to be covering. I thought it was a really interesting concept. So, Snowpiercer, sure. sure. it's on my list. I have not seen it, but I'm not taking it. It's an amazing movie. I really got to know. I was like, you guys watch a lot of movies. We do. Oh, the yeah. We don't go to the movie theater and watch new movies. We just no. don't have. We're so no time. theater, but I mean, because that's time, right? Yeah. yeah. To get and up money. and go to the theater. And money. And money. And here, <laughs> oh, the movie theaters get caught. So <laughs> Wait, hey, I've got people on my internet. They're going to see comments that are like, how the hell they complain? They're in Harvard. They're complaining about money. <laughs> I think before I decide to go to the movie theater, it really depends on what the movie is. If I'm looking for like an experience with a lot of action, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I'm much more likely to go to the movie theater for that. For that movie. So, quick sidebar, I'll give you. So, uh, I created. I think I was telling you this earlier. So, I've got these lists right that are starting. I'm going to do them on my YouTube channel now. We're putting out more content. Um, I did a list of the best movies of 19, and then the best the list. For the 2010s, mm. but I kept Netflix separate and distinct. Mm. So, for oh, instance, yeah. Marriage Story and The Irishman were not on my movies of 2010s. They were on my streaming movies right. of 2000 yeah. because it's different content now, right? right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, things yeah. are changing that way. I mean, The Irishman is a three and a half hour beast. I don't know if you've watched it. Not a little uh, long. Part of it. Good movie. Get it. Good. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's long, right? It's long. So my point being is that that that. That format is going to get bigger. Marriage Story won multiple. I mean, they won for Laura Dern, Best Supporting Actress, um, Scarlett Johansson, or, 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 <laughs> Scarlett Johansson, and Adam Adam Driver. Number below for you, simplify, homie. Um, <laughs> Adam Driver nominated for Best Actor and Best Support or Best Actress and Best Supporting Actress for Laura Dern. My point is that all of that is coming. This different format now, kind of like what HBO did. You know, they're putting out original content too. So I kept them separate, the streams uh, from the overall. But my point to you was, there are movies I go to to a theater for. Yeah. But I want to go to a theater. Mm -hmm. I don't want to kick back with with this one or this one. Get out of my way! I'll be doing this stuff right. I'll be yelling and screaming, or or maybe if I'm like I'm feeling all like a. Like so sentimental and stuff. I'll watch a movie on my day. <laughs> so nobody can see the cry, right? But yeah, um, to go see a movie is it's it's money, it's time. Right. It's almost like a commitment. Yeah. You right. gotta get up and go see the movie. But yeah, let, let's talk about you know, you're gonna see Avengers, right? You're gonna see, no, I was just about to say those you're gonna see Star movies. Wars in a the theater. Yeah. You know, there are movies yeah. you're gonna see in a the theater. I get that much. Right. Uh, yeah, Joker and I, that was one of my favorite movies of the year. Okay. Best acting performance, you know, you saw all that. I mean, that was legit. All right, so you did educate me a little bit. So Snowpiercer, anybody else got something for me? Maybe uh, I haven't seen a lot it. of us have seen Snowpiercer. Yeah, so one movie, I, I I don't recall the name, but it had Shia LaBeouf and a kid with Down syndrome. Oh, um, damn it. I know what it is. Um, I haven't seen that one yet. Great. Oh, oh, so somebody he, brought it up. I, I remember the name. I'm forgetting. But it was brought up. Somebody told me to go yeah. see it. I haven't seen it yet. So um, it's kind of based off of Mark, yes. Mark Twain. The little kid's got Down syndrome. Little kids got Because he's the one that he brought up to him or brought with him to the, the award ceremony. Yeah. That was cool as hell. You yeah. know, like, all right, kids. Awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, so it just kind of brought Shia LaBeouf, who was this Fisher guy, um, with this kid with Down syndrome who kind of like ran away from whatever institution mm -hmm. he was in. Um, and it just brought these two characters together. And the, the Down syndrome kid had like passions for WWE wrestling. Um, <laughs> Whoa. And mm -hmm. not to spoil the movie, but it was a, it was. It told a story of companionship um, right. and love, and there was two characters that you would never imagine being together, uh, coming together. And it, was, it was an awesome story. It was definitely a uh, movie that movie that I saw recently. I'm going to remember the name. 
No, that ain't it. That ain't it. You know what? Two confessions by the Wake of Boss Twins. She has a twin brother, Eddie Shot. You know, Brock just Googled the I I'll know the name is too late because it was recommended to me by some of our, our, our the peanut butter falcon. That's it. Mm -hmm. Peanut butter falcon. Yeah. Yeah. So, so another good another good one. So Snowpiercer, and that's on my list. I, I literally have a list of people like, well, you gotta go check this out. Yeah. And I'm making my effort. So Snowpiercer, uh, peanut butter falcon. Anything else? So now, if you want to talk about a movie that has love as, as a main central idea to it, life itself. Yeah. That last was, year. Uh, it came out last year. Oscar it does, yes, it does not get the big? credit it deserves. It is an absolutely amazing. It's, 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 it's a good cool film. Right? Um, it's it's really good. Love itself. Life, life, itself. life itself. Life itself. It is. Okay. You're gonna watch it, and within the first like five minutes. Yeah, in the same way as you say, like there needs to be a plot twist for a movie. There's not a plot twist, but there's a connection that isn't made until the end. And okay. It makes it very worthwhile. So you actually have to yeah. watch and consider oh, yeah. and then put oh, yeah. together. And then all the puzzle yes. pieces come together. And that's not a good movie anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it got that's, like, like, that's too much work. That's the movie we checked and it had like a 6.9 on IMDb. We were pissed. It was, yeah, it was really? so good. Well, it, on Rotten Tomatoes, and this is why like I, I sometimes don't really like Rotten pay attention shit. to like critics and stuff like that much. Sure. Rotten Tomatoes, the critic score was like a 30-something. It was super low, but then the audience score was like a ninety-five. Yeah, wow! And it was—it makes sense watching that movie. It was absolutely it was amazing. Good. It was probably—it yeah, was, it was one movie. of my. It was probably like top three favorite movie of the year. I, I would be surprised if somebody could watch that movie without crying. Yes, like I don't yeah. cry at movies. It's, it's very, very, very. I'll rare. be watching that one on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody sees it too. No one wants to glaze over Snowpiercer because I didn't think it was that good of a movie. What? How dare you? I thought it was mediocre. How dare I, you? I thought it was a good well sound. It's low budget. It's so different. Low budget. Yeah. yeah. But low budget. Okay. Yeah, it's but a the concept of it was just the most interesting part. There was just yeah. some yeah, some absolutely. parts were just executed really cornerly. Wow. Wow. Okay. okay. So the it's reason that I loved it so much is because so just so you know, like Ask his cold loves Chris Evans. No, it's not it's not so um my minor that I'm studying in is audio film visual studies. So I have a really great watch out. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the reason I love the movie so much is because it artistically portrays some of the main messages without any words being said at all. Okay, which is absolutely beautiful to me. Like the concept of moving forward or moving back is something that is so deeply ingrained in this movie mm -hmm. that. Literally, like, you, you, yeah. no words have to be yeah. said in it to portray that. You just know, like, go. So, for a little bit of context, all these people are in the back of the train. They have to make their way to the front of the train. The front of the train represents moving forward, the future, like, trying to change the current situation you're in. You're laying out the whole metaphor of the movie without even giving basic details. That's fine. Well, no, I I know, I'm about to get yeah, it. It's not like it's going to matter because, like, if nobody watches it, you just give it <laughs> well, well, here's, like, the main artistic <laughs> element that I was going for was, like, they they have this one single shot that they keep having. It's Chris Evans, and he it's facing the camera, looking left towards the front of the train, <coughs> and then looking right towards the back of the train or some other element in the back of the train. It's him making a decision like, do I go forward? Do I go back? Do I go for the future? Do I try and change things, or do I go back? But and I don't try think the reserves? metaphor in the front of the train is necessarily the future, more so the front of the train is the upper levels of yeah. society. It's That's all. It's, it's, I feel like it's taking me both. Taking me both. <laughs> Maybe. No, it's not really like the rich are the future. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that, that's well, why I'm just alienated most of my audience. <laughs> 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 you know why? Because I go on here sometimes, like, if you're rich and you got all the money, you don't want to hear from me. <laughs> 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 I was actually wondering the sound is working fine. You know? Well, I think it is. So, for you guys, I'm making sure that I, I forgot to share into group. So, what we broadcast or we put out on Supermax International, that's a portion, it's a page, and then I have a separate subgroup at Supermax Nation. And that's kind of my, my hardcore loyal following of people. It's a closed group, and we deal with not just what we're doing now, which is society and culture, but we talk politics. Uh, the page started as politics, and we won't go too far there tonight, but it started as politics because... I felt, yeah, I felt you know, the need 
to be a place where you can come to on social media. You guys will understand this immediately. Go to some place on social media where you can actually have a lucid, honest, intellectual, you know, fact-based, by the way, mm -hmm. discussion without ripping each other to shreds and talking smack about each other and getting dirty, being threatening, being offensive, uh, foul language. That, that does not happen in my group. I'll boot your ass out. That's the whole, you know. That, that's, a, that's a very rare thing. It, it does not happen in our group. That's why it's like I don't have a gazillion right now, but I'm gambling that over time more people would prefer to be in a group that's not the normal social media blast where you can't post anything and people jump all over for stupid reasons, right? Right. Um, and then you have to keep, again, you have to keep your language clean. You can't attack people. Uh, I don't like this, this mob stuff where, like, somebody has an opinion and then you've got these three that have the same opinion and they routinely gang up on people that are not like them. And the one person is just sitting there taking salvos left and right while the three are, you know, contracting to, to destroy this one person. <laughs> I think it's stupid. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very easy for that one person to see the wrong. Uh, right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And then right. listen, and they could entirely be right. Right, exactly. But because of mob mentality, you know, right. you, you'll get beaten down. Or, and I'll, and I'll say this, I used to kind of be like this. I got tired. It's like, why am I letting these little minds beat the hell out of them? Keyboard warriors. They're tough when they're behind a keyboard, right? When you'll never see them. They never have to stand in front of you. But, you know, good people, maybe you guys would agree with me here. Good people, honest people generally and genuinely do not want to like start shit, start arguments for no damn, you know, obligatory reason. You want to be able to talk to people, right. you know, in a good way. And you don't expect to be able to say something and then be attacked. Attacked, I'll say that, you know, attacked verbally online because you're not of the same stripe. I think mm -hmm. that's just stupid. Yeah. You know, so that's that's why we created Supermax International and then Supermax Nation, the group. So we're at about 250, 270, you're getting close to 300 now. And it's just, I mean, there are people from all over the country, mostly from my area, but they're white, black, blue. I'm going to give a shout out to Supermax Nation, my crew. Um, white, black, blue, brown, green, orange. Um, mm -hmm. You have people that are, you know, not very wealthy, you know, poor, uh, middle income, um, young, old. We have quite a mix. I have a lot of my ex wrestlers, uh, fighters, guys that I work with, um, a lot of vets in my group because of my background, and a lot of family, and just a lot of people from all over the place. And it's a space you can come to and have a serious discussion. I have cut off to where they can post, like, just for the hell of it, because that was going crazy. So I try to post things that I think are important societally right now. I try to make sure that it's all fact-based. I don't post anything. You guys will laugh about this. I don't post anything, meaning go grab a headline, save it, copy it, then paste it in, unless I read all my material. I read everything. And sometimes they're long, sometimes they're not. But... I put out nothing that that is um, that hasn't been vetted mm -hmm. properly for fact, for mm -hmm. sure that. And then I tell you where I'm at, you know. Um, and you know, people say, "Well, do you lean left, lean right?" I lean left depending on some issues, and I lean right on other issues. Military, obviously. Um, social conservative, there's some of that for me. Fiscal conservative, there's some of that for me. Um, I'm kind of more liberal when it comes to some social things with people like being able to live their damn life without people in their business, mm -hmm. living your own life. You know, I don't give a damn what he or she does behind a closed door. That's not my business. By the way, that's old America. That's real America. Life, liberty, and the pursuit. You know that that stuff? You guys should. Right. Yeah. So that that's kind of super vaccination. That's our group. So I'm making sure that I, I share it out to you guys. Uh, you should all have it in the group now. And then when we get back, we'll, we'll translate it to the YouTube channel. All right. So moving on, so you know a little bit about the group, because we didn't talk about that as much, but a lot of wrestlers uh, in my group, guys, awesome. and, uh, and a lot of my ex-wrestlers, so, you know, they'll appreciate you guys a little bit, so, all right, so we talked a lot about movies, I got some movies, I, I know I need to see Peanut Butter Falcon, because I was already hit with that one, for sure, yep. um, Snowpiercer, I've seen, I will get to that, and then the other one was Life Itself, Life Itself, thank you, Snowpiercer, it's 2015, yeah, it's older, right? no, it's older, no, where you, yes, okay, fair enough, and I was looking for this last year, but, you know, oh well, over there. Okay, so let's talk some music uh, to, to close up our night and uh, let these guys go cut the weight. <laughs> like a, they're gonna go cut the weight. Hey, it's good to take your mind off it until you have yeah. to do it, right? You don't like thinking about it. I don't know about you guys. I never like thinking about having to lose weight. I was like, when do I gotta go? When do I gotta do it? Doom, 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 doom. Get the hell out and I'm done. Mm -hmm. So I was telling some of the guys here that I'm just about concluded with creating my 2010. 2010's playlist of music 
And I'm going to have two separate lists, one generally, and then a separate one that is country entirely. You guys know I love my country. Ain't nobody can two-step like the Supermax. You just can't do it. <laughs> All right? I can literally two-step to everything. You know, we're listening on our own means. You know, that song, I can two-step to that. I can two-step to anything. So if you know country, you know the rhythm. Yeah, she got the blues. <laughs> so you know the music. So I'm um, two lists, country, and then one general pop that includes all else. And so we're going to talk a little bit. This is what I'm going to do tonight, just on the spot, having a thought. I'm not going to rap tonight, but <laughs> I can't keep it tight. So what we'll do tonight is I'm going to take a song, and you'll be on record. I'm going to take a song from each of you. From last year, one from last year, you're gonna have to wait, you gotta pull out. Oh yeah. <laughs> the boss is gonna have to pull out the you gotta pull yeah. it out. Okay, so think of thinking as we go right now. Everybody's getting the I mean, I got the blood. All right, hey, look, let's go take one. Fair enough. It's tech, right? So I'm gonna take a song from each of these guys for 2019. And one song that you must have. Watch this. I will put your song on my list. That's a big deal. Oh, God. I will, oh, you, God. This song will go down forever on the Supermax top songs of 2010s. At least the 10s, because there's a lot of room there. Maybe not so much for 19. 19. No, because I don't eat up for 2019. If I take 7 or 8, that's going to cut into my mess. You want to do the 10s? Yes, volume. Six or seven guys, and I've got 100 songs on a playlist. That's easier. Okay, so that, that's what we're doing. Check this out. So tonight, they're going to give me, don't consult too much as long as you don't do. I just don't do. All right, so consult your playlist. So one song for 2019 and one song for the whole 2010s. I'm taking tonight from this Harvard crew that actually isn't, you guys, none of you guys are actually from Mass, right? No. Anybody here from Mass? No. Nobody. So they're from all over the country. They're all wrestlers. They're all crime partners of my son over here. So <laughs> I'm going to take their, their music and I'm going to include it in my decade best of list for the record. It's for the record. It's going to go up on my YouTube channel. And then you guys get at the very least. Here's what I got for sure. So when I create this damn list, all you little mugs better go to my YouTube channel <laughs> and listen to your own damn song, right? You better listen to your own damn song. You're the one that picked them. All right. I'm this not first. No, me I, um, I, I don't. I, nobody's first. I can go first, I guess. Um, but this is terrifying. So my music taste kind of just runs the gambit of everything, basically. So, I don't. I don't, I don't know. Um, so which one? One for 2019 or one for 2010s? So for 2019, I would say uh, Punchinella by Earth Gang. That's not Who's the artist? It means something to me. I gotta find it. The Happy Foots. The Happy Foots. The Fits. The Fits. <laughs> yeah. So Dirty Imbecile for 2019. Yep. Uh, and, and then a song for 2010s. Uh, this one I. That's a big critter. 2010s. This one I I just got introduced to. Uh, I have no idea when it was made. Lucas again was one who introduced me. No, actually, I think it was Evan actually introduced me. I heard it when we were in Rustic back. What was talking about? California by Childish Gambino. Okay, you, you put, are you sure? Yeah. That guy is still challenged. I thought he matured by now. <laughs> <laughs> I am Chick Gambino. Okay. So, so I think which one was it? Uh, uh, California by Childish California. Gambino. California. Childish Gambino. All right. Not bad. You got two? Yeah. You got your two. That's not bad. What are you making faces over there? You don't get to make faces. It's my list. Make your own. <laughs> Chingo. <laughs> All right. Who's got next? Uh, I think I'll go two hip hop songs with my, uh, my spots on the, on the list. On 2019, well, you were the one that said you could dance the best out of the group. <laughs> I got can. some moves. I got some moves. <laughs> <laughs> I got some moves. I got some moves. Um, you can. Well, for 2019, I'll go YNW Melly Mixed Personalities. I don't think that song. <laughs> All right, say it in the camera because I'm gonna go back and get these again. YNW Melly Mixed Personalities. Um, great song. It's got Kanye West in it. And so that's 2019. That's 2019. Okay, 2019. Um. And then 2010, you guys better pick some damn good songs. 
Because this is one of my like my decade playlists. Yeah, I got you. I got oh, you. That's terrifying. I think why it doesn't. Hold on, hold on a second. And it doesn't mean that it has to be like popular or pop right. or like chart busting. It just means it has to be. This one. I'm gonna have songs on my list that some people may not know, that don't listen to this genre or that genre. But the song is significant. It changed some things, or it was a different, you know, construction. Right. Uh, yeah. That the lyric was moving, or a powerful message. That's what I'm going with. For so what you got? I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the next personalities for 2019. I thought that was a pretty good song. Uh, I listened to it a lot. Uh, for 2010s, I have to ob obligatory. Um, it is my obligation to say our post below White Iverson. <laughs> um, White Iverson? Yeah. White Iverson. That's um, you have them? It's one of Post Malone's. I think I have. Uh, yeah, breakout yeah. Songs. songs. And just so you guys know, I had it downloaded in my SoundCloud playlist before anybody Damn. else really knew it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something that I, I, I stand by. All right. And All right. I love that Post song. Post Malone, yeah, White Iverson. <laughs> I got my I 2010 have, song ready. I, I, don't have, I don't have my 2019 yeah. yet, but for my 2010 song. Just the whole decade. The whole, the whole decade. decade. Yeah, I got my song picked. And you know, you are on record, right? So they can come and bust you later. This is the one. You later. I got it. It's uh, Let It All Work Out by Lil Wayne. This is one of, <laughs> this is one of my favorite albums of the decade. Lil Wayne is my favorite artist of all time. And this song has pulled me through some lows, I would say. <laughs> okay. Um, it's it's a pretty powerful song. I just love Lil Wayne too, and I love this album. So you guys are like a hip hop crew. I didn't yeah, know that. Really. Bunch of white Iversons in here. Yeah. <laughs> just just not the basketball. A bunch of white Iversons. I could ball a little bit too. <laughs> yeah, I and he can dance. I thought, I, I thought that was 2019. It was 2018. I know, but yeah. Was it technically? Oh huh, yeah. Yes. Oh, okay, so give it to the camera. So I gotta do that. Lil Wayne, let her all work out. Okay, so that's for that's for the decade. That's for the decade. What about okay. funeral? Yeah, I mean that's twenty twenty. Just now, now. Yeah, now okay. longer in the decade. Yeah, new decade. Should be in ten years. My my twenty tens is P A Nights by Matt Miller. Mm. Okay, um, that one just reminds you of where you came from, um, not forgetting that aspect of your life and how she did. P A Nights. P A Nights. Okay, Matt Miller. And that's your tens. So who are we missing? Me. My twenty tens is "Excuse Me" by ASAP Rocky. Um, <laughs> that's just a song that anytime. Isn't he a little fool that got busted. Rocky, he got, he got, he got, he got busted in Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Trump freedom, man. Trump yeah. Trump <laughs> freedom. But "Excuse Me" is just a song that, like, anytime I just want to forget about anything, I put that song on, and it just completely clears my mind. So that's gotta be it for me. Including your roommates. He plays that song quite often. So I don't know exactly what that says about all of us. The same the place. Truth comes out. Yeah. yeah it's it's when you're, you put it on there, you put it on camera, go live nationally, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you just said that. Remember what you said? <laughs> I got it on record, homie. For 2019, I'm going to go with Palm Olive by Freddie Gibbs featuring Pusha T. Uh, that Freddie Gibbs album was just one of my personal favorite albums of 2019, and that was probably my favorite track off the album because Pusha T killed that shit. Okay. <laughs> All right, you guys are giving me some stuff that I wouldn't know or normally not know. I'm not a young buck anymore, but I do listen. I do listen. So I'm going to listen to everything you guys are bringing up and find a way. Tens? We get everybody tens? He's being his, he's playing his games. <laughs> Stop playing games, let's see. When we want to play games later, we start we start hitting the Greco. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 I got both. both. I got both. Let's hear it. got both of them? Yeah. You saving them? Huh? You saving them or what? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, 2010s. Got a lot of hip-hop here, but uh, my favorite album, 2010s, was also a hip-hop album. But So, I'm stuck between three songs, but I think <laughs> I'm going to go with... Just because it was the first one I heard. Give, give me something different because it's. I'm Wet trying. Dreams by J. Cole. Mm. That's a good. Damn. That's a great answer. Answer. That was a lot of. Mm. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> Look, it was like. Mm. Yeah. I was well, like, I like you made a good Yeah, you should have. Yeah, how do we not know that? Even I know that. <laughs> how do I know that? I love you. That's a great song because it was released at a time that a lot of us 
That was my deployment. <laughs> that was deployment for me. That was when we were figuring out our sexualities as men. Yep. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of bad. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 no, I mean, that song. I do not understand. That song. Uh, <laughs> I, <don't understand. laughs> I do not understand. It was probably a different song for me 30 years ago. So <laughs> something like that. Okay, so what other? And then 2019, uh, Lover, not the album, the song by Taylor Swift. What the hell? What the hell? Listen, that song. You're only saying that because you got more beat on the bones now. I don't like the album. I hated that album. That is one of the best songs she's ever written. It's Uh, one of the best uh, songs that I've ever heard. Love songs that I've ever heard. Period. Period. Okay. Richard's getting married this year. He has all the Romans on his mind, right? <laughs> you must be loving the brain, right? That's what Rihanna yeah, said. On. That's what Rihanna said. Anyway. <laughs> okay, got your two. Who's missing? Two. 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 All right, you get off your phones. I'm trying to find my night. This is hard. It's North Star, my offset, and C. Love Reed. Where's your most play that? This last year. Yeah. Bro, did love that song. Okay, so the song's North Star. North Star. My offset featuring C. Love Reed. C. Love Reed. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, for 2019, this is the last one Trevor has been really, really good. It's 2019. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm saying it's my up. dreams. I think all these songs are, that are 2019, they end up being 2018. Yeah, like, wow. wow. The time has flown. Yeah. Um, 2019 was like, yeah, for songs. Yeah, it was. Great for movies. Absolutely. You know what? I saw a thing that said um, 19 will be remembered. For a long time. Oh, no, absolutely. I was talking to Katie about that. Ah, yeah, it, it kind of when the, when I when I read the article, like you know what? Wow, I guess so. Remember it's movies. It's it's absolutely like and like not I don't know coincidentally or not. I've watched more movies this year than I've ever watched since yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. Since I was young. Yeah. I watched way more. Okay, sure. All right. <laughs> the the pressure. pressure. You gotta have a playlist. I really want to use this 2020 song as my 2019 yeah. song. I'll tell you what. Go ahead. All right. It's uh, I don't sleep. It's on the new. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the new album that <laughs> recently came out on Funeral, and I just bump this song all the time. And you gotta listen to it. Strictly away. Strictly away. Okay. So I can't no wait. Uh, I've been listening to. Let's let's do this. Yeah. We're gonna go a little bit extra here, and then we'll, we'll wrap up. So that's what we're gonna do. Since we've all at one, I say we, including me, we've all at one time wrestled, lost weight. Did the ugly, you know. Wrestling's a grind, gentlemen. I think you know that. I'm not to explain that to you. It is a grind. It is not an easy sport. It is a pain in the ass sport. But I loved it. I still do. You guys do or don't, depending <laughs> on where you're at. Um, but I've been doing this with all the athletes I have on my show. I've had football players. Matter of fact, we had a, a young blood. Um, he is our number one right wide receiver at my old school, Central High. Which one state, right? Correct. Get in there. So uh, my alma mater, my high school, Central High, uh, in Fresno, recently won a Division One AA. That's like one cut from like a big massive. Um, and California is a big state <laughs> for football um, and some other sports, but it is a massive state. So my alma mater won their first ever um, state championship and the number one athlete. And I will say the number one athlete and receiver on our team. Uh, we had him on air. Um, and that was pretty cool. Great kid. I mean, I didn't even know this, but he, his family um, is at Westside Church of God, Westside Church. Um, really religious, but really down to earth. Hell of an athlete, phenomenal athlete, but really humble and respectful. But what I did with him, and I'm doing most athletes, most athletes is give me your stuff that you listen to when you're ready to get it on. Um, free game, warm up, want to whoop that ass. I know, That's I know, it. So everybody give me one song. That and it doesn't have to be now. It could be maybe when you're a kid, you know, that song that maybe your dad made you listen to, and you're like, ah, you know, wired up. Or it could be a song you listened to recently and something that, that really gets you prepared, you know, for getting on that mat. It's too many. Yeah, there they go. Look at me. I don't need the phone. Everybody needs to be careful. I'm going to say, everybody should have at least one of those songs in a playlist that you use for warming up. Or even after, even yeah. after, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so everybody has that. And we're talking to wrestlers now. You guys all know how this works. 
So we're going to take one song from each of you guys, one song that you use, that, and I say use, right? Not just listen to, but that you use to get you right there, ready to go, ready to go whoop that ass and, and you know, come off the mat with, with victory or whatever. So let, let's go ahead. Evan, you like Yeah, yeah. So, again. Um, let's, let's go. <laughs> the one I definitely have to bring up is uh, from my childhood. Uh, listen to this, prepare for my district tournaments in junior high. Uh, it's Monster by Kanye West. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I got to mention my other ones because I'm passionate about it. <laughs> um, my running song that always gets me going, I can run sprint till the end of this song the whole way through is Amazing by Kanye West. And then um, the one that sustained the, my entire life has been Lose Yourself by Eminem. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> classic. That's a good song. Um, and then my Freestyle freestyle 4 by Kanye as well. That was my state tournament my, my junior year. Okay. I, I, when I listen Someone to it, came it, brings back. Back to the gym. it brings me back to the gym and me warming up and I, I just get in the zone. Okay, he over. was prepared. That one was prepared. <laughs> that, that's a good, that's a good uh, selection there. All right, so, and that's from like, not just like this year, but going back, right? Yeah, I always have a song that uh, yeah. I listen to right before I get on the mat. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, and, and listen, music changes, right? I mean, something that was good for you when you were a little buck, you know, seventh grade, you know, might have been good back then, maybe not as good now because you got something new. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that either. That music was, music tastes differ, obviously, too, and change and alter. They're not always the same. You can listen to a variety of things. I got country music that I like to listen to. Yeah. I mean, uh, to beat the hell out of people. Right. Yeah. I mean, I just do. But like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> beat the hell out of people. Yeah, I was like, that was like one of the hardest things when I came back to wrestling. It was like the same warm up song I wasn't doing it. And I had to, like, I'm serious. <laughs> I was just like, what the no Molly yeah. Crew? What the hell? Ah, well, I mean, that, that'll always be it. Like, that's, that's just, time, that's just one song. Though. That is all time for me. <laughs> the crew. All right, who's got next? I'm all good all the way. I think my, uh, my childhood ones, I definitely was really into Lincoln Park. Um, yeah. Okay. So, uh, my top well, two. you're songs, a little bitty buck running around with Lincoln Park. <laughs> I know. I know. My top two that I always would listen to, both the songs before warming up, was um, In the End yep. and then Bleed It Out. In that world. Okay, okay. Bleed it out. <laughs> Bleed it out. <laughs> That's specific. Bleed it out right before I'm stepping on the mat. You know, like three, four minutes left in the match, I'm putting bleed it out. Yeah. But before that match, before that, before that three minute warning, it's in the end. Like, yeah. And if, it, if a pin's coming, I quick switch it to bleed it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's serious. No, that's that's, so that's, 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 that's real. That's real. That's real. That's that's real. real. That's that's real. 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 Always on the back. Yeah. <laughs> and then more recently, uh, yikes by Kanye West. Okay, but. Yeah, nice. no, nothing, hit, nothing hits quite as hard. I should have, you know, this should have been the first question. But I always do this, like I said, with, with athletes, yeah. you know, because uh, music is a big part of, yeah. you know, what we do, whether you want to admit it or not. We can talk about movies and TV and other stuff, <sighs> but music, you know, is visceral, you know, to use the word from earlier, in, in a lot of ways to your thought processes and, and the thing that you're actively engaged. And everybody here has been doing wrestling a long damn time, a lifetime, right? And you find a way to marry those things over your lifetime with the sport to make your sport a hell of a lot more tall. Because I'm going to say it again. Going out and, and, and cutting weight um, <laughs> for you guys. Uh, but, you know, it's not fun. It's business. You know, at least it is for me. I used to tell him, you know, I raised him like, you know, some of this shit is not fun. It's fun when you're whooping that ass and you're raising your hand. That's fun. The work to get to the fun you know, you make that business. You say, I got to take care of these things. I got to listen to music. I got to get my mind wandering on the outcome. You know, the here's my journey, but I got to get to this, this selective mission, right? And and music has always been, I know for us, it's always been a big part. Absolutely. And it ends up being something for just about, you know, I don't know of any athlete that at really at a high level and definitely collegiate, right, um, or beyond, that doesn't have something in music that they uh, that they have that's a set thing. But it does more. So I mean, you guys are having really good answers here, real easy. So who's got next? Uh, yeah, I was gonna say some Eminem yeah. because that's what got me started, like with pump up music and rap. Lose yourself is a damn good song. Lose yourself, yeah. by the way. Yeah. That was like, I listened to that stuff religiously when I was in like junior high, getting into music as a wrestler. And then now, one of the songs that I most consistently go back to before I'm warming up is is Liddy by Meek Mill. It's just one of my favorites to get into pumped up. Is that recent? Um, okay, and so that was you were still in high school then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, he was the 
Yeah, for me, when I was a kid, it was Hard with Champion by Nelly. That's not funny. You know why? Because <laughs> Nelly was big. Nelly, Nelly was, big. was big. That's why I gave him for a like, a okay. Right there in yeah. that little time window. I mean, everybody on the planet wanted to collaborate with Nelly. Right. And everybody mm -hmm. wanted to be in a video with Nelly. I mean, and I mean, seriously. I mean, Great I made you all. listen to a lot Great of that. Well. Well, I'm telling you, I made you listen to a lot of that. Check one, two, one, two. That's uh, just growing up, like that would always be bumping in our wrestling room. I was like on our first mm -hmm. CD of 12 songs. We played every single practice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did your coach allow that? Our coach helped yeah. me put the playlist together. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay, really okay. Brutal. Listen, because we all know, like, some coaches don't. You know, some yeah, coaches, yeah. some coaches roll up on you, or, or no, you roll up, you roll up into the gym, right, or the wrestling room, and you know you're gonna get lunatic French. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. That was my strength coach when I was Hey, no, no joke. I'm serious. And listen, and don't get me wrong. I like the hell out of that song. I actually watched. You know, I, I remember the movie. I watched the movie when I was a kid. When I was young, but I mean, like coaches. Let me help you out. <laughs> Add to your damn playlist. Add to your playlist. Also, I like Red Rider too, but that's not the only damn song in the planet. At least cut out the intro. The intro is like a minute. You'll <laughs> 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 be there all night. I'm going to say it. I like that song, and I listen to it too. But again, you got to expand your business, right? You got to expand your playlist, man. There's more than that. Coaches. There's more than Red Rider. There's more than Lunatic French. Don't just watch the damn movie. All right, so what else you got? Any others? Yeah, my recent one is Murder on My Mind by YMW Mallory. <laughs> it's just like... So not, who is this book? YMW. 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 YMW yeah. he, he got like probably, I'd say, three popular songs. Is that newer? Yeah, yeah newer. Okay, yeah. so I'll guess that. Like, <laughs> either he is in jail now, but... Or that. Sorry. For, well, okay. <laughs> he wrote the song Murder on My Mind about killing one of his friends. And coincidentally, one of his friends was murdered. Did he murder them? Well, to be determined, he is in jail. For what the hell? No. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. But I didn't know that. He dropped a few good songs before he got locked up. Yeah. Right? So, but wow. that song, like now when I wrestle, like I just try to have fun. Like I just try to think about relaxing before a match. I don't try to get as hyper focused as I used yeah. to because True. I feel like that's when I wrestle my worst. So that song is just like you too little. And, and that, yeah. yeah. So that song is just like intense matter. That makes me like seriously want to fuck someone up, but it's over. I laid back to you for that. I've never heard you say that. I've never heard you say that. I want to fuck somebody up. I'm trying to do it every day. Of course, you don't know. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Now you know. Now right. Good calls. All right, what do we got left? So I'll, I'll go next because I don't want to go last because I already We're know. We're last, dude. Oh, you no, but you did. I already know that my answer is going to make. A lot of people, like, you're going to get mad at me. No, it's, it's just I have never used music to put myself up. What? Never once. You don't listen to any music? At never. All. Well, I'm not I, saying that's fucked you up. But Cole, Cole just stands there. I, yeah, he I does. does. He does. I, 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 I asked all of them. I've never so once had on a pair of headphones before I go off to Okay, you do never. I got to tell you, I don't get surprised to them, but. I'm a little surprised. Yeah, and then, well, it's, I was thinking about it when we were all talking. It's because I've never had music in wrestling before. So when I was growing up as a kid, we did not have a sound system. We never played music, never <laughs> once. Okay, and then my high school, and that's <laughs> Illinois wrestling. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, you don't want to get on Illinois wrestling. We're gonna, we have, we do very very well yes. in all of the national. Yes, but but after Pennsylvania, uh, yes, better than Pennsylvania. What are you talking about? Stop, stop. Stop. Oh yeah, my God! Just just the way way. No, before we digress, <laughs> before we digress, um, then, let me let me mediate a second. <laughs> He is right in in the sense in the sense it's like freestyle and grapple stuff. club international yeah. style freestyle and yes. grapple. Uh, Illinois has been kicking ass, including oh. Pennsylvania. Oh. Yes, for the last ten to fifteen years, and we've watched that because we did a lot of that travel. And Illinois has put together a better system of building their teams yeah. right. to perform yes. at nationals, yes. especially for the duels. Yeah. Season is very, especially very for important. duels. Yeah, yeah. Very so, and, I'm, and I'm talking more specifically about duels because yeah. even if you go to Fargo. Everybody been Fargo? Everybody? Yeah, yeah. Y'all Fargo guys, okay. Yeah, I thought I'd like you. <laughs> yeah, Fargo's important. You know, West Coast, it's not as important to a lot of guys out there, but it is was important to us. So Fargo is, you know, the individual aspect of it, right? And so that's more in, you know, 
you guys go to the tournament. I don't. Every state has a different structure on how they put their team together, their qualifying process. But there isn't like one systematized coaching staff that's all working with that group of kids mm-hmm. from that one state, unless you're doing the duels. Mm-hmm. And that's why Illinois has been kicking ass for about a decade, decade and a half now. And they do beat Pennsylvania. You know, I'm not saying every week, every you know, every damn year, but they have had. I, I would say Illinois has now collegiately. <laughs> collegiately, okay, not that's as much. Your state prioritizes youth freestyle and Greco. <laughs> We're, we're, we're dominant going on for the national high school. Yeah. Well, you're, you're not in this conversation. Well, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's right. I think that, I think that, I, as soon as that came out of my mouth, I had to stop talking. Well, so so year in and year out, Pennsylvania has the most NCAA qualifiers. I mean, no, and places. And all and places. Places. Yeah. I think we just lack in getting our good guys to actually do freestyle and Greco. Like, yeah. it, it's so, you it, still do. I mean, you yeah. still have, well, definitely at the top. You'll have guys that come. I remember the Marsteller kid. I mean, wasn't he Pennsylvania? Yeah. I mean, you guys still have some A-list guys that are right here that are quality in all three styles, which which is what I believe good quality wrestling is. You can do all three. My rule was always like, I'm gonna whoop your ass in this style. I'm gonna whoop your ass in that style. I'm gonna whoop your ass. And ultimately, as they tell people, like, because we have an area, some people would say, Well, I got my kid got beat, but that's in freestyle. Oh, my kid got beat. That's in Greco. And I look right at the coach and say, an ass whooping's an ass whooping. <laughs> <laughs> in any style. You got to ass whoop. You know, that's it's the same to me. So we digress for a second, but let's clear all that up. Listen, this is all wrestling talk, right? This is all wrestling talk, and it's all legit and honest. So finish up. So, so I got more. And then in high school, our coach, we would always ask her. You got more, but you ain't got no song. Yeah. Right. Well, no, well, no, I got, I got, I got some. I'm not no, done. I'm not done. Yet. 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 I got more, I got more, but you got no song. No, that's not. No, I do have a song. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. To, um, to so make that was the first time I ever got to like actually do stuff to music and it was no, wild okay. but I still can never get past that so what's the song my, my song is um I have so many vivid memories of when We're I was a kid, we driving with my dad to meet he would always play Thunderstruck Okay. Oh yeah, every yeah, single I'm all, time. All good with that. Always, I'm all good I had so many members of that. And then as soon as we got, as soon as we got, it was all business. So Coldest game, the, the longest thunderstruck at the gym. Coldest game, the longest possible story for the most basic. Exactly. That's all that happens. That's actually good. That guy is thunderstruck. Yeah, that's kind of sad. That was so revealing. Yeah. Build, build, build. I wanted to give an explanation for why. My incredible, I insane, wild pump-up song. Yeah, indeed, you did. That was, uh, like, that's literally you like, it's like, like, uh, Morty. Why? Yeah. <laughs> you all got right, the milk out. All right, so what you got? All right, all right, all right. So, from, from Audio Slave, we got, uh, Ooh, Coach Eyes oh. and Be Yourself from Rage Against the Machine. Coach is it Coach Easy? Yeah. Yeah. From Rage Against the Machine, you have How I Could Just Kill a Man, um, <laughs> Sleep Now in the Fire, oh. and Renegades of Funk. And from Motley Crue, you have Dr. Feelgood, and of course, most people who know me know this, Kickstart My Heart. Ooh, this Live Wire? Live Wire, what the hell? I didn't really know it until like, I didn't know it until like, like last I year. I can't believe you said Motley Crue. Live Wire is good, so, so I'm a, I will say, uh, well, I don't know this, but I'm kind of a Motley Crue aficionado. Show him, show him, show him. I'm not showing him that. Wow. <laughs> oh, taking out my damn shirt for it. <laughs> it. It's all good. I mean, literally, I have playlists of just Motley Crue for working out and yeah. beating ass. Literally. Because it's not a, a handful of songs, especially a lot of their older stuff. It was raw. It was, I won't say quick, because, you know, two-minute song, three-minute song. Boom, 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 boom. Really smooth, uh, laid out. The rhythm section, you know, um, you know, Tommy Lee to Nikki Six, great rhythm section. And they really just put out like hard in your face stuff. That was heavy, you know, my time in the eighties. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm especially partial. Cause here's the thing. I was in the army when they released Dr. Feelgood, you know, the album. And obviously Dr. Feelgood's good. The whole damn album's good, but Kickstart my heart. I mean, um, military guys, that's a, an extra degree of. Uh, that's also, for those that. That was the yeah. song that I listened to before I jumped out of Jumping. Yeah, <laughs> jumping. Because, I mean, that is literally adrenaline. Oh, and right. this guy that takes it from an airplane, I can go on and on. He knows. But uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm partial to that myself. So I'll tell you what, I'll give you a few for me. You know, saying, and here's a here's a trick. You know, I've been a coach, right? And not just a wrestler, but a coach. <laughs> I was reared on lunatic print. <laughs> that is bad, man. That is bad. My coaches were like, they're Mexican coaches, and they didn't listen to a lot of, uh, yeah. like, they didn't listen to any heavy metal. Yeah. They didn't listen to any metal. They sure as hell didn't listen to rap, because rap wasn't rap when I was growing up. Uh, it was not, uh, trust me, uh, 80s, no, not the same. Um, you guys wouldn't even know Sugar Hill Gang and <laughs> Curtis Blow, and yeah. I could go on. But, so it wasn't the same type that you got now. So it was a lot of lunatic fringe and stuff like that. But, but out of that time, you know, I've got my piece. But, yeah, so the two for sure, um, Kickstart My Heart and Thunderstruck, because I used to listen to those when I used to go to my, this is not entirely wrestling, but <laughs> when I was in the Army and I was in Germany, on the weekends, <laughs> there were three clubs. Rich knows the story. There's three clubs. There was a Longhorn. Got you. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is in Germany, by the way. You know, so the Longhorn, I would go to Dance Country. I like the two-step, already right. notified. Right. Um, there was the Life. That was where all my brother crew and others went to dance, you know, like like Evan can. Also, you know, <laughs> also two-step. Like, <laughs> and I, I'm not joking. No, I'm, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm the only guy that's been out there. I get out there and bust you know, two-step the raw face. It takes two to make things go right. I bust <laughs> So that, and then the other was The Rocks. Were you two-stepped? <laughs> <laughs> I was a two-step. <laughs> you, you'd be amazed at how many women you could get if you could dance alternative to everything else. <laughs> that was one rule in our house. My, my wife should be listening to this message. <laughs> but that was one rule back then. If you could dance to everything, you will never be without attention. You know what I mean? I'm right. not joking. If right. you can right. dance to everything, yeah. you will never be without attention from the other side. <laughs> They're always looking. So my, my songs were back then, and they came out on roughly the same time, Thunderstruck and Kickstart My Heart. And in our in our little joint, it wasn't a night until they played those two songs back to back. When that happened, that's when the, the joint was at its livest and you know it was like crazy. And so those I kind of incorporated into like when I came back out in my early twenties and I started coaching. I, I put heavy stuff into our playlists. Um, I had white guys, black guys, brown guys, my boys, you know, the wrestle. They listen to everything now. Kind of the same, right? They listen to rap. They listen to rock. They listen to country. My guys listen to everything because I kind of listen to everything. Sure. I have no regrets from making them because it opened them up to some different types of music, you know. And so hopefully you guys kind of appreciate that. But, yeah, some of his stuff obviously is mine. You know, the Rage Against the Machine. Um, yeah. Their music is like, it is right for heavy and, and really getting jacked up on something. And then Audio Slave, we have a personal passion for it. They're just, uh, some of that stuff that came out of the early 90s and brunch and alt was just absolutely incredible. And he knows this too, that they were underappreciated as vocalists. They were Lane Staley, Scott Weiland, Kurt Cobain, Eddie Vedder, who's still around. They were I mean, absolutely incredible books. And of course, Chris Cornell just passed away. Yeah. So these guys are just like a cut above. They could sing anything. They just so happen to be in this style of music. So anything out of that time period from that group, I listened to a lot of that as I was coaching in the 90s and the early twos. And so all my boys, you know, going back a long way besides, besides him, have all listened to that type of music, you know. Mm -hmm. In my word, you know, not like uh, where you were, but there, there was no way we, we wrestled without music. Mm -hmm. Music was all around. You had to have it, you know. It's just, like, and again, you know, I diversified because in my area, I don't know about you guys so much, but in my area, we have uh, we're we're ag, we're agricultural. We got some urban aspect. Uh, we're a little bit of a lot. We have a lot of different diversity in, in terms of our ethnicity and our culture. And so, I mean, I can go bust a cumbia if you guys know what that is. I listen to a ranchera um, while turning around listening to the Motley Crue and Metallica. Mm -hmm. um, so, in my group, diversity is, I, at least for me, anyway. It's a damn good thing. It's value it, because it's like uh, you understand the concept of uh, someone who understands or knows and can speak adequately in multiple languages, right? It's a different degree of intelligence. Diversity culturally is also a different degree of intelligence. So I always made sure that we incorporated that into our wrestling even before he was born as I was coaching. I wanted to expose my guys, my wrestlers, to a bunch of different aspects of life, including the, each other. I mean, we had Indian kids, uh, Punjabi kids. Mexican from Mexico, Mexican kids from you know from our area, uh, white. I don't like using that term as much because there's a lot of different white, 
you know, an Anglo-Saxon Protestant isn't the same in one place as another. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, actually where we are here, you have a lot of, you know, Irish Americans, but you can go to another part and it's Italian American. And the point is white isn't white. It's just like a lot of different ethnicities just because the skin color is the same. Doesn't mean the language was, doesn't mean the religion was, doesn't mean the geography was, doesn't mean the persecution which they left Europe for was. Mm -hmm. Going on, we're doing culture. I'm going to do like a history show for you guys. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so those are my, um, I'm just making that a point to you that there was music, you know, in our, in our room. There had to be. And it was it was diverse. It was a diverse set of music. So I think that's about it. Uh, we're probably well past an hour, and some of these guys have to go cut some weight. But um, any last thoughts, guys? So most of the guys that are watch the show, most of the people are in Central California. But we do have people that watch. Uh, there's a lady, number love for lady, um, lives in New York. Hey, Barbara, she watches religiously. Um, she watch. She never misses the show if I'm on. Uh, she's in New York. Yeah, but she she'll be watching anyway. She's always watching. I got the Wismers in Michigan. I got people in Florida, Georgia, and of course California. Right. We're, we're um, Steve Florida, Moyer in right. Oklahoma. My homie, my homie Oki, real deal. Um, so they're all over the country and all over the place. Um, what do you guys got for them before we head out? Spread love, man. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Right. That's that's good. We need it right now, don't we? Yeah. I don't even. I, we don't talk politics. We don't need to do that right now. But regardless of where you sit politically, um, left or right, center, this, that, um, Democrat, Republican, conservative, liberal, at this point it doesn't matter because when all this mess is done and it will be done at some point, we still need to get along. <laughs> we still need to work together because right, I can tell you directly, and Rich can say the same thing. There are countries out there that like to grease our ass right now, and they will if we are not together. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when you're on top, you know what happens to the guys on top. Somebody wants them out. Yeah. That's There's all history. Stuff. That is history. And and we'll get our turn if we're not careful. Yeah. No, that's it exactly. Okay. Thank you, boys. I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you, guys. Super vaccination. Number love for you. So we'll get this out on the YouTube channel. And since these guys gave me their songs, they're obligated. That was Evan's word earlier. Uh, they're obligated <laughs> to have to go on the YouTube channel. To listen to their own damn music. There you go. That's real hard work. Huh? Yeah. That's real hard work. Okay, number love for you. We're signing out. I'll be back. I'm in location now in Boston. I'll be back sometime next week. But I want you guys to pay attention to what's going on in Supermax International and Nation. We now have hip hop scene. Um, those ladies are kicking ass. We have the fighters voice with Richie and Cole. Those guys are doing their they kick ass, literally. Um, and then we have um, Dr. Miller and Swainbo are gonna be on, on Sunday discussing cultural issues in addition to the In Touch crew that are going to be talking about African-American issues starting next Tuesday. So only growing content, getting bigger. Super vaccination is a very, very big critter and only going to grow. So number love for everybody. I'll see you guys when I get back. Number love, Super Max is out. Later. Thank you. All right, you cut it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's always like the last end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Thank you very much. That was, that was fun. fun. That was fun. Yeah. Just discuss.